In this video, we're going to set a PHP unit to run its unit tests through PHP Storm using PHP, which is installed locally. So we have PHP installed on my MacBook here, and we're going to configure PHP unit and PHP Storm to play nice so we can run our two unit tests right from within the IDE. So there's really only, only three steps we need to do whenever we're configuring um, a test runner to work with our IDE. In our case, we need to configure a PHP interpreter, which you should do per project anyway, regardless of if you're running your unit tests or not. Then we need to configure PHP unit, and then we need to create a run configuration. So let's get to work. The first thing we need to do is to create a PHP interpreter. So I'm in the settings pane here, languages and frameworks, PHP. And then I just need to tell PHP Storm which CLI interpreter to use. So I'm gonna go dot, 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 so I can add a new interpreter. And you can see here that PHP Storm has detected all of my local versions. You can see how many versions I have installed locally. I'm going to go for the newest version, PHP 7.1. Um, I use Homebrew to manage my uh, PHP installs. And it's just detected everything for me nicely. And um, we don't have a debugger installed in this install. And we're using uh, PHP 7.1.2, which is slightly out of date, but it'll do for this demo. So that's all we need to do is to add a new interpreter so we can apply and okay that. Now I need to remember to apply this because I'm gonna work with another set in here in the PHP. I'm going to go to PHP unit and this will just tell PHP Storm where to find um, PHP unit code on my local machine and how to run it. So in our case, we have a path to the PHP unit dot in our project. You could use composer autoloader if this was a composer project. I'm using WordPress, which doesn't actually have a composer autoloader installed. So we've got the PHP unit dot far. If you're using composer to pull in PHP unit on a per project basis, it's much easier to just tell uh, PHP Storm to go to vendor autoload and it'll work. It'll just work for you out of the box. In my instance, I need to say path to PHP unit dot far and then browse to that, which you can see is in the root of the project there. There you go. And then um, you can see it's detected that it's PHP unit and it's 6.1.3. The other thing I'm going to do is to say which default configuration file to use. Most projects will ship with a PHP unit or XML file that contains the configuration for um, PHP unit. So we can tell PHP Storm where that is and it'll use it for us. So in our case, we need to go to WordPress and then PHP unit or XML. So I can click open and now we've told PHP Storm where to find PHP unit and which configuration file to use. Everything else should be fairly straightforward. So we've configured PHP and we've configured PHP unit. Now I just need to create a run configuration, excuse me. So we go to edit configurations in the drop down here and then we want to add a new configuration for PHP unit and this is it. We give it a name. Uh, local unit tests, let's say, because we're running it locally. And if we select defined in the configuration file, we don't need to use a scope. Now you could use a scope. You could say, I only want to run the tests in this directory. I only want to run the tests for this class, or I only want to run the tests for this method. But it's a lot easier to just say defined in the configuration file, because if we're only running tests for a class or a method, there's a much easier way to configure it, which I'll show you in a minute. Now we can click apply. Now we can click OK. Um, you possibly don't need to click apply as much as I do. I'm just in a habit of doing it because when I'm recording these videos, it's better for me to be safe than sorry. So that's all we need to do. We can now run our unit test. So if I click play, you'll see that the unit test. So we're just clicking play to run the configuration we just set up. And you can see the unit tests are running. If we um, remove the filter for OK tests, you can see all the tests are running. 400, 500, 600 out of uh, 7,880, and we're, we're all running fine here. So let's um, let these tests run and come back to it when it's finished. Okay, so the tests are run. You can see uh, 7,880 tests done, 29 failed, 35 ignored in three minutes and two seconds. Um, on the left-hand side here, you can see all of the tests. So if we fold these up, you can see um, there's a lot of tests in this test suite, and it took a long time because these tests aren't just unit tests. Um, even though they use PHP unit, there's integration and acceptance test. It touches the database and it checks everything's working. So it's expected that it would take that long. Um, interestingly, we can remove the okay tests. We only really wanna see um, fail tests. Then we can filter by uh, okay and skipped. We don't wanna see those. Um, and then we can take a look at why things have failed. So you can see here's a test with a, a fail and assertion and it's failed asserting that two strings are equal. The interesting thing here is that we can see what's expected and actual as we can, but there's a diff browser. So if this was an array with complex multi-levels, we could easily see the difference using the diff browser here. So that's kind of neat. And also we get PHP SOMS navigation from this test runner. So we can navigate straight to the test 
um, by just clicking on the um, the links that are provided in the in the fail and test suite. So if we hide all these screens, we can see exactly where in the code this has failed. Um, and we can also see exactly which test has failed using the navigation. This is really neat. There's a couple of other things we can do as well. So um, once we think we fixed this, this test suite takes three minutes to run. When we think we fixed this, do we really want to run a whole three minute test suite just to see that we fixed it? Possibly not, but what we can do is we can use the button here to just rerun the failed tests, which is nice. So if we click this, it will only run those tests that have failed. Um, so you can see it's running them again. They're all going to fail again because obviously um, I haven't changed anything. But you can see 28 failed, 1 ignored, three sec three, uh, 1 seconds, 380 milliseconds. Heck of a lot quicker than running the whole test suite. So that's really nice. So this is the test browser where we can see exactly what's going on and why tests are failing. You can see there's a lot here that aren't asserting anything. If we now look at the unit test, I mentioned earlier that there's easy, easier ways to create run configurations for specific tests or specific classes or methods. Um, and we can do that just by right clicking on the thing we want to run and then selecting run. So here, let's just run this test. It's more than one test because there's a data provider here, but let's just run this test quickly. We can right click here and just say run. And then tests canonical, this is the name of the class, and we can just click that, and we're literally just running this one test. Now it has four data providers, so it should run four times, which it does here on the left. And you can see it's already created the run configuration for us right there. Um, and we can do this in multiple places. So for example, we can run this from the class that's being tested if we wanted to. Um, by right clicking or a method so this works beautifully and it saves us having to figure out the php unit command line stuff to run these tests that you which you could have done from the command line so that's how you use php unit with a local interpreter there'll be another set of videos talking about how you can use remote interpreters so keep your eyes open for those and i hope this has answered some questions for some people and uh yeah thanks for watching